<laughs> that was the wrong button. Apologies. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So thank you for saying yes to this conversation. Uh, I'm just hearing like on the outskirts of my attention from time to time about legends of what you're up to in New Zealand, uh, the raw project and, and the... Um, yeah, the podcast, the Edgecast that you created, God, I'm not yet in the new terminology yet, fully anchored. And I'm curious and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you made this proposal to record this conversation because I had the same sense and I was like, but I don't know really what is going to happen, but I'm so glad we're doing it anyways. So <clears throat> my question is, I've heard, Julia, you are the founder, the creator of the creationness of edge casting. And will you say a few words about what that is and how you started that? Yes. So I started a podcast in about in the, a year and a half ago, roughly. And, and Chloe actually pulled me up on it and she's like, yeah, it's not really a podcast what you're doing. What is it? And she asked me to walk with a question or put that possibility in my field. Because what I was doing is I was holding space for people to speak into. So I was kind of conducting interviews because I wanted women to speak to their edge already, like what they're doing, like to map out a territory for, for people to hear, okay, this is actually already possible. And I could be so bold to inspire other other people, especially women in this case, to build out this territory. It's like, okay, others are already doing it. And let yourself be inspired so you can you can do that. And so I wasn't really speaking about myself in it. And I wasn't also not even, yeah, at some points not even asking so many questions. Or sometimes it would be more of a conversation. But yeah. And I was with Janet Redmond, who then helped me. Like she, she's like, "Oh, maybe it's an edge cast." I'm like, yes, that's the word. <laughs> so it was a collaboration, the word, and and it's as I keep walking with it, the way like, I looked into the terminology and podcast comes from Apple iPod and broadcasting, and and that was the device that it was used on. And I, I'm not really wanting to promote that. I guess I'm, I'm not into this game. So yeah, Edgecast is has turned out for me to be really a broadcast for edge workers, about edge workers, about the edge. So really edge of modern culture and mapping out how could it go differently? Like where what are people already doing at the edges and how what is then your puzzle piece as you're listening? So okay. You know, they say, ah, if she can do that, maybe I could do that. What is my part? And, yeah. And it's a bridge. So it's a bridge for people that are in modern culture or for people that are on the path into next culture to to keep going or to build out their own. Yeah. And I, hmm. I noticed that quite a lot of people out there, there's something that's happening in the field that people interview each other and I love it. I'm glad about that. And, you know, so your question is like, okay, I want to hear some more have some questions around that and yeah I, I totally think it's time to make visible what's happening because there is so much happening and taking it out of the shades and putting it really in the bright light so that others can see like oh okay i'm actually not alone ah oh, actually wow there are other stories to tell than the general story of doom and gloom and, and competition and profit making and yeah it's really feeding the field with empowering stories and inspiring stories and mm. distinction yeah also about bringing distinctions to life mm -hmm. so you started out as like I, I didn't fully get it you started out interviewing people but also speaking like, yeah it was, yeah i was oh. following necessity and my necessity was to 
Yeah, radically live. Okay, I'll start maybe a bit earlier. Like the radically live women is something that started as a as a four day immersion that I was holding with Sibylla Bidat in New Zealand, and so in person getting together. And I realized there's something missing in terms of how to how to build the container for that, how to build out the like more mass for women to be able to connect to that. And and my piece was I love interviewing people. I love holding space for people to speak into that just comes comes through me and I've been doing that my whole life I think mm. and then, um yeah and then as I let go of my expand the box trainer identity I used to be an expand the box trainer for a few years and and that didn't really didn't really take off for me it wasn't really marketable lineage it didn't really come through there then I was faced with okay what now and and I just decided to follow that impulse of I love doing that and I'm just going to do that and so I started interviewing and also not being I started interviewing and also being part of the interview like not taking myself fully out also being part of the conversation and yeah so that emerged and and I've played mm -hmm. around a bit, so being less in the conversation like really just like in some in some episodes I there's like three questions of me and I don't say anything else and it's just all the stuff comes out <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and this piece that you just mentioned about mm, listening and it was always part of your your journey can you say a bit about that it seems to I, I resonated with that felt mm -hmm. resonance yeah, I'm discovering the the immense non-material value that like a, a real like there that a listening space has. And a listening space, there are different kinds of listening spaces. There are listening spaces that I, I've I've done a lot as a woman, especially, just letting people dump their stuff into my space and just being like a garbage can. So I've done a lot of that, and that's more like the shadow aspect of it, I guess. And um, to be loved, to be someone for the other, be needed. But then there's something that came through the possibility management path of possibility listening, adult listening, these other kinds of listening, where I could become the space for the other to speak into. And that requires me to have also, like to be a space holder, and that means I'm not a garbage can. I'm, I have a sword, I have clarity for the kind of space I'm holding. And and I can declare the space. And so discovering the immense power of listening when I do that consciously and also it's like there's only it's a more recent development for me, like the last half year, that I acknowledge it to myself, the immense value of that. And that's been also with the help of, of other people that would give me feedback that, you know, when I listen, something happens to, to them, to their speaking, to their clarity, to their possibilities. And I'm like, I, I, it, it's hard to grasp for a modern culture trained mind to, or box to say, okay, well, there's actually something different qualities in listening that people can even detect and, and notice. Yeah. So I, I, mm -hmm. I'm covering that. And I'm discovering my enthusiasm about that. There's really a research that I love about it. It's like I read Clinton's book, Clinton Callahan's book, No Reason. And there's the, like the, the piece in the book that stuck most with me is when he, did you read that by any chance? Yeah, yeah. When he was in this, um, like they had this, like um, Arnaud Desjardins was was holding, was was speaking to the students and Clinton had, would just set up the space, sit in the middle, ask one question, ask everybody else to take notes. And and the the technology he used to empty the space continuously through his grounding cord, and I was like, fuck yes, that's such a great technology. I'm gonna try that, and I've been trying that, and it works, and I love it, and and I'm intrigued because I think there's much more to discover about it than than that, and there's probably people out there that have discovered more, and yeah, I love that. I love how that uh, yeah brings possibility of people's beings to come through and. For them to speak from a different place also than their ego or their box. Mm -hmm. So the more I do it, like, you know, yeah, thank you for supporting this Julia Butterfly Hill interview because as I was in there, I was like, 
fuck yes, I love doing that. This is my job. And I never thought that this could be a job. Yeah. Mm. And like, okay, so this is my job. And then the next challenge is okay, how do I make that so that I can actually keep doing that and don't have to go do other jobs so I sustain my life? I, I haven't figured that puzzle yet out, but it's 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 a path to, to walk. Mm -hmm. I am while I'm listening to you, I'm I'm mapping inside of me out a kind of path to become an edge caster. Mm -hmm. And and I think like I'm I'm feeling turned on by this idea when I I told you when I read it, when I read the website, I got these goosebumps and I was like, I'm I'm an edge caster. And I think there are other edge casters out there who don't know yet that they are edge casters who could use a website mm -hmm. as, of course, not a, a rule book, but as a kind of um, Liana to, to, to grab and to swing with for some time, at least. <laughs> and when you when you think about it or when you look at your own journey <clears throat> what would be what would be steps to becoming an edge caster what would be steps that you can offer as possibilities to someone who wants to become an edge caster yeah great question because i've been also walking with this question of okay how do i um, yeah share what i've been discovering and how can people be empowered to do that see that in one thing that i've noticed is that actually all my space holding training flows into it you know the whole path of being an expand the box trainer and going through these maps of expand the box totally supported me to be able to hold space so part of the path is learn to hold space and go through the healing processes necessary that you can actually and keep healing like keep being on the path of, on the evolutionary path is one like that's like the groundwork and like i love this possibility of if you have a topic that interests you to start interviewing people about it and start recording it and really um in that practice space holding to center ground bubble declare golden cube set a grounding cord call in your bright principles and have a clear purpose for that conversation. It doesn't mean you have to know where you want to get to. Not at all. It's more like you need to know the starting point. Like that's what I've noticed. And so, so that's for the for the space holding part. And then there's, um, yeah, especially like, you know, I was like when you're holding Rage Club, instead of telling people about rage, how it is and is not the new map and the old map while you're building your circle could be curious about, okay, what is their, you know, interviewing them about their maps of rage or what 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 is in the way for them to be angry and all of that, like this would be bridge building already. And to start um, being curious about people and, and, and shift that perspective. And then like in, in very practical terms, I came across this um, article that I, that I also put on the Edgecast website hcast.strikingly.com that where there's 10 steps really 10 simple steps from a podcasting platform about how to set something up and so there's this logistic of just having a platform that you can actually broadcast on and this it helps to use podcasting platforms for that that already have a reach and that people already are using so there are some steps for that and to choose yeah, to think about what is the topic, what or what is the container, what is the space that you're holding space for in the in the bigger picture of what is your purpose, what is that that you're intrigued by. You know, in my case, it's it's women and and their radical aliveness, and I know you do a lot of men's work here, and so maybe for you is something about yeah men this could be that would be such a valuable um space to open up to to speak with men that are actually beyond the holy tribal hero yeah you know, that 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 really want authentic adulthood manhood for their lives 
and yeah so, so picking the top uh, picking the maybe more like the territory that you're curious about uh, intrinsically curious about and also there's so much possibility how you can do that you can do interviews but you can also do research and then speak about it yourself and, and or mix it or like this possibilities are endless so and then to choose a format that works for you i've i started to choose 20 to 30 minutes i started to choose actually 20 minutes and i made it quite rigid that it's a 20 minutes episode to start with so that it would be yeah th there were just there were statistics that that was a good number that that was the the, the length that worked best for people across the platforms and also for me it worked because then I wasn't making it such a big thing and it was sort of digestible or like concise to not go into this you know people can talk for hours about things they love and to make it um to get to the essence I'm interested in the essence of things so to to navigate to the essence and and and, and get there within 20 and now I've extended it to 30 minutes and it's not so rigid anymore. It's like if things need to come, they come and I'm still holding space for this time, time frame around 30 minutes. So to, 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 to ask yourself like, okay, what is that that I want? Maybe it's more like one hour conversations and what is the rhythm, your rhythm? Like I've gone for weekly broadcasts and that is quite a commitment. And, I'm glad about that. Like maybe someone else wants to do it every two weeks or every three weeks or once a month or like there's no right or wrong. It's just, I find it helps to commit to a rhythm. It helps me to commit to a rhythm. Otherwise it can fade out. And yeah, and it letting that, um, what really interests you, um, like to, to let yourself commit to that and then let that commitment shape you and that will get you in interesting places. I, yeah, I'm, I've, after one and a half years of doing these, or not quite one and a half years, but a bit more than a year of doing these interviews, I'm, I notice how my shape is changing that I'm, I'm now getting bolder also in reaching out. To, you know, it's like it's been a gradual um, discovery journey to reaching out to women that I might think of, they might probably say no. And I have reached out to women that haven't gotten back to me, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, people that have written books and are famous and I've reached out to them to see whether I could interview them and you now don't always hear back and that's okay. Like I still keep going anyway, because I want this to exist. <clears throat> mm -hmm. What what is it that like what is it that that wants to come through you, Jan? What is it that that you're yeah in a way like turned on by like to that that sparks you lights you up to explore with each casting in some form. My fire burns bright for finding out what transformation is about or how it works. And so the title for my my podcast, oh God, I'm still, my edge cast yeah. is Shift Happens, Chaos of Transformation. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, mm, I'm, I'm having this, I have also this curiosity with you. I thought about asking you to make a podcast with me because... I have this curiosity about how different people um, transform differently or with different tools or with different speeds or with different um, uh, contexts even. It seems to me like you're holding space for a very specific, um, I don't know, it's, it's a very unique context. And when I would put words on it, it's a, it's a, a feminine, it's a sensitive, it's a, mm, it, it is this kind of more creating a vacuum for evolution to happen approach. And you're, you're really holding that firmly, that, that flag. And I, I'm curious about how it's working and where is it working or where is this approach working where 
maybe another approach that is also happening in possibility management where it's more like a the there's this this um I forgot the other term, but there's the difference between vacuum and pressure or like a pressure yeah, okay. learning. Yeah. And and so yeah. How th these kind of differences between what transformational principles and and spaces work and and are needed also maybe sometimes from time to time in in different quantities and qualities and and yeah and make a a research about this go to different people and say hey what worked for you in these areas to change make a change and and see how that is if there's a map if there's a map being created out of that cool project go oh, i love it yeah yeah i'm up for for an episode of that if you, if you want to do that cool i'm glad <laughs> yeah yeah I, th I think and and the cool thing is there is not one way there is not one right way and yeah i keep learning also keep learning about that about yes. the pressure because it's like yeah the different kinds of pressure even but that would be yeah something to explore in a separate episode i think mm -hmm. cool and so you have you have already created something shift happens tales of transformation of transformation cool yes yeah, I've I've created something and it's not fully set up yet. It's more like a, a stepping stone. But I've I've built the fundament. I've I've yeah. I've put even my first episode on there even though it's not not fully done yet. Yeah. Cool. So and then I have these very logistical questions of um so what what kind of um software do you use for working with with the um with your podcast mm -hmm. so do you do you mean to edit it or to yeah to, to edit it yeah i, I want to say first that that there are these you, you know that probably kian and someone who hasn't researched that there are different platforms that already offer a hosting for free and you can like po uh, podcasters on spotify is one it used to be anchor and buzz mm -hmm. is another one and i think caster is another one so there are these platforms where you can make an account for free and you can start podcasting away itch casting away broadcasting away you know there are also other variations of itch cast that some people might call it portal cast or heart cast whatever it is like cast away and and then yeah i i like i personally want like i've learned that it's worth putting some extra effort in to make it to, to look at the quality of things and i'm on the learning spiral for that still so editing to make the sound better or editing to to, to cut some ums out so it's a bit easier digestible in the in the listening experience so that it's a there's beauty in the listening experience also and for editing, I'm I'm using a software that works on Microsoft, like on a Microsoft computer, a Windows computer. It's called WavePad. It's it's basic. It's not something that I would say, yeah, I would totally go for that. There are there are more professional softwares probably. It's just what I started out with, and it works for now. Mm -hmm. And um, and Millicent, who does a lot of editing, also. Um, has an Apple computer and she works with GarageBand and GarageBand is for free on Apple. So WavePad has a has a fee to pay, like a license fee. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, and then it, and this go go. Like you could even just Google and or like search on a on a browser for uh, editing software for for sound. Like this is on the audio and then for. You, know, if you you could also choose whether you want to publish videos with your HCast. And then the videos might need editing or not. Like you choose what you want to do with that. Mm -hmm. Is there a 
I I don't have the link right now, but I can I can let you know about that. There's a there are also platforms that that um offer software, including like a video um, recording um, platform where you yeah where you it has maybe a higher quality than than zoom in terms of the video recording and they then offer snippets and all sorts of things so that's paid paid pro paid platforms mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you yeah mm, and what you s just said speaks to another Im interesting quality the cutting out m's and learning to make the podcast more listener friendly mm -hmm. and where you speak a bit to that and also the journey of that i assume that you maybe have been going on to to speak more succinctly or precise and how that whole thing is gone yeah yeah i am um... I love this learning journey actually to notice as I edit the audios to notice my speaking and what I do, like become conscious of my patterns. So I noticed that, yes, that I would ask, I noticed that I would ask three questions at once and that doesn't serve the space, for example. So I would, I would learn from that. And also to, um, yeah, so my, to to learn from from as i edit like what am i doing and how can i shift that so that i speak more clearly or that i yeah some of it i have addressed and some of it i've not like but that's actually really fun to find out more about for me and also yeah i enjoy that process of learning about speech pattern like this these sound waves as you and then you can you can see on the on the profile of a, of the of the sound you can it, it's so individual like there's such different sound profiles um yeah so i enjoy that and then um yeah taking some ums out just helps the flow i find but i've also made the the discovery that i would sometimes cut out make the breaks in in between words a bit shorter or in between sentences a bit shorter and i've gotten the feedback that it seemed rushed so i'm i'm moving towards editing less and letting it more raw which fits the format and giving it more raw and at the same time yeah as i said like with the perspective of making it audible friendly so because as like i see the difference between yeah actually as you as i say that i got i have given this some thought or some reflection or some noticing of when i'm on video you know on video if i watch a video i can see you're still there if i have if there's a long pause as when people think about the answer or they're just taking a break to to reflect then like a 30 second pause in an audio is just where are these people so i cut those shorter so that there's still an, an audible pause but that it doesn't like that it's still in a flow that it doesn't keep that people don't drop out basically but they know okay there's still this going mm -hmm. uh, that and yeah and sometimes just also removing some background sounds that are disturbing or or making you know sometimes if a microphone the quality of a microphone can vary and so my voice might be really loud and the interviewee might be really soft so bringing that up so that it's not like this explosion on the ear when when you're tuning it up for this for the interviewed person and then listening to the other person it's like these big differences make it hard to listen mm -hmm. Yeah, so there goes care into that, and, and I, I enjoy that. Yeah, does that answer your question? Or... Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I feel that's that's my questions I had. Um, I'm just aware of my am now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
yeah, yeah is cool. there anything else from from your side from that you want to say about this experience of edge casting or bridging it yeah i want to say that I, i've been walking with this question to hold space for that as a specialty and i i think it's something also to not do alone and whether you know i would like to keep researching with you as you as you have this interest and you know what you're saying it's like paving out the path like or one path or like elements of the path rather because it's not linear um mapping mm. that what what is already has already what i've already discovered without noticing maybe that i've discovered something because yeah it, it seems little in moments and then i forget that it's actually relevant and to map that out i, I would like to keep researching and Yeah, and this other thing is that no matter how, like really don't do, like do it, don't do it alone. It's like have a team. I've created myself an age casting team in in different editions. And at the moment there are other women that um that love interviewing. Like Annika Kosten has also ha held space for some episodes. And yeah, to to be collaborating with that so that, that other influences can come in and yeah to to collaborate i think it's really time to collaborate in whatever we do to not do it alone not figure it out alone mm. every way and i yeah, i can recommend creating a team that could be in the background for questions that you have that have a yes to your edge cast um or people that love editing or want to learn how to edit or people that love to scout and find people yeah, I don't know, whatever, or that love to do write-ups. You know, this is also another territory of how do you write it up so that people get what it's about and that it's that it can be found also that something on the web that I think this can also be refined. It's like, okay, how to write it up so that it can be found easily. I get goosebumps when you speak about edge casting as a specialty and I see, I get this image of <clears throat> people going out into the world and with their questions and with their listening, building out a, a kind of space inside of them, but also in the, the ether uh, for, yeah, important for conversations to be had that that need to be had, that need to be, um, yeah, that somehow contribute to this whole thing that's happening. And yeah, I feel, I feel very glad. And, and it's such a unique skill. I'm noticing that myself to, to learn to listen properly and how to weave the flow of a conversation and, and make it a, an enriching experience for for everybody involved and just while listening to you now i can listen to these different things like to the facts to what speaks through you through to where do i see your being um having having it's not even information like in the word sense but where is your being offering me transforma transformation and information on a level that I can't even like pick up with my mind, but on another level. And yeah, to, to have a, have that ha as a kind of path to grow the skill of listening and, and deepen that research and that realm and make it a, a five body intimacy archetypal listening journey space adventure wow seems so powerful and um also what that means for transformation how like the power of listening for for transforming the person that you're listening to and you yourself who's listening yeah i'd say for transformation to be able to occur yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's then from the intention. Yeah, cool. 
and I've worked with some people uh, who weren't from the possibility management context who I felt through their power of their listening, they were doing some kind of other therapies, were able to invoke or give me an experience of feeling myself in a way I've never felt myself before. And so there's such a, yeah, there's such a unique power in it that I, I think is so valuable of making it a, a path or a research. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And I, yeah, I'm curious about that. Like that's the place also where I, I want to learn more. I want to learn as much as I can from any context that has something about that to to hold space for that kind of listening that is transformative and that opens up possibility for transformation, for evolution, for humans to be really, um, yeah, to become their consciousness in, in action. Yeah, this radical responsibility piece to shift consciousness in, every, in humans. Mm. And I then said, um, that it's really it's time to build bridges outside the possibility management world. Yeah, I mean it, it, there are these bridge builders, and I'm a kind of bridge builder in a like through the edge cast. This is like a bridge building endeavor, and yeah, I sense this necessity to really build circles, build circles, build circle building, and reach reach beyond people that already have been to possibility management spaces that already have have found the bridge basically have found the bridge already mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and I yeah I get this and build build a Yeah, build some some kind of. It's like a mm, God. The words are coming that I, I don't like. The words that are coming for me right now, but I get this image of there's some kind of body of knowledge is being built, some kind of body of um, experience or speaking about about things is being built that people can can go through. And I'm going right now through these. Uh, podcasts from the 70s of the, the Clinton recorded, Clinton Callahan and, and his crew. And and I'm so astonished by the research that the people and the spaces that he was back then in already did. And I'm just like, wow, this is so edge stuff. And yeah, and to, to not underestimate the value of that research even though it seems so mundane maybe for us to now, but to for some kind of future. Yeah. And yeah. I, I noticed that it matters for me that it is actually not so much about it's not so much about it, it is partly documenting what happened or what people have done. And my purpose is really to go into the future from that or to launch. It's like the launch pad. It's like, okay, so how does it go to build out archaearchy then from mm. the step? Okay, and then build out into the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, I love that. Mm. And wow, I'm I'm having this memory of the job of storytellers in the past. Storytellers were those people who who gathered the stories and came to places to tell them, and they were trained in this. And pe that was the non-material value these people carried. And there might be coming the time in archaearchy where there's the 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 necessity for edge cases to record the 
some kind of evolution of a human for for the whole for for everybody to hear to i don't know <laughs> to be with and um yeah these people need to start training now yeah and i think actually the time is now it is now the necessity is now you have the necessity i have the necessity others have the necessity so this is the time mm -hmm. yeah <sighs> And do you did you read um Ender's Game? Mm -hmm. Speaker for the Dead. It seems also I did not read that one yet. But but he, he spoke about this in the end that he became a speaker for for the dead. Um and and, and you didn't read Ender's Game or you didn't read Speaker Speaker? I didn't okay. read. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Just at the end of, of Ender's game, there's the story of this. They found this. Um, I, I don't want to spoil people with it. Give it away. Like, but he becomes a speaker. Yeah. And he becomes a speaker for the dead as his job. So when when someone is dying, um, he comes and speaks to them. Or he, no, actually. When someone died, sorry, that's wrong. When someone died, he comes and speaks for the dead person. And he speaks about their life and he speaks about what they were, what they did, what they stood for. So as his, his archetypal job for sharing the legends about this person. And yeah, I'm just mentioning it also for, for making this image big of what an edge caster, what, what a job he might have. Yeah, and she, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the ma the main thing for me is really it's like yes, acknowledging the that it is a job, acknowledging that it is to be built out, and acknowledging that it's worth going into the direction of what really excites you to to research and to bring. To the light and it's like make visible it's it's a part of the job is make visible yeah be it about what's already working or what could work differently like into the future hmm. yeah yeah love that and yeah because what you're saying like bring it to the light means like you have a certain each edge caster has a certain listening, what he's listening for, what he's wanting to bring to the light. And so each edge caster could make an interview with a person and totally create a total different story out of it. That would be an experiment to do. Yeah. And and I also, as I listen to you, is... Um... I get the sense that men would actually really love this job because it's like you can be nothing. Yeah, you can Fine. you can be nothing and, and and really practice that through that. And then you can hold space for that in your everyday life. It's like a practice ground for that. And and de delivering self like a value service to the bigger community through that. Mm-hmm that and say yes this is great and and then from that comes the question okay and what is the where is maybe a different quality when a man listens from nothing and a woman listens from everything and how does it go like you know because feminine and masculine is in each of us like how could maybe also you listen from everything how could i listen from nothing and in a way i think sometimes i do that and sometimes i don't like to be more conscious of that Mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay so i love that this we we've in this conversation we have spoken about four more kinds of different listening than than is on the list of listenings <laughs> so this this list will keep on growing it seems like L listening from nothingness listening from everythingness yeah. Um, said a few other ones listening from 
for the beingness. Yeah, and also listening for facts. Yeah, you mentioned okay. that also. Okay, that's for me, I think, Maria. Yeah. yeah, thank you. For me, that seems complete too. I, I will go with this. I will walk with this. Question of what next to build out really a game world around this skills or these, the, the, not even build, let it emerge. Like that this, the next step for the next step. Mm -hmm. will you do the same will you listen for your necessity and the necessity of the field and be in touch if yes. you have and I just got these images of okay there might be a listening training coming up yes I have that also in me yes cool and I, I, I would love to um, sort of tap into Clinton's um research there okay. i think he's researched quite a bit about listening too mm -hmm. how are you going to do that i will ask him whether he's available for a conversation and or a work talk about it like a space where others can also benefit from that mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. Yeah, and cool. then yeah, I, I'm in, in between spaces, so I don't want to commit to anything right now. And I and I have the urge of like, okay, let's, let's do something. Yeah, well, and somehow keep it cl like I don't I don't have I've also quite a few things to do in the next months, two months, but to to keep that research, I will keep that research close to me and um yeah test out things and do do experiments about it and i think then there will be some time to fertilize that and see what emerges yes great let's do that mm -hmm. okay okay thank you, so Kian. Thank you Kian. yeah see you another time see you bye